page 40, marching here and there. Then here, we're giving you an example of a key signature changing in the middle of a piece, where it starts out in one key, and then suddenly it goes to another key, and who knows? And it can go back and forth and whatever. You can change key signatures anytime, any place. It has to be at a bar line. It has to be at the beginning of a measure. But other than that, it can be anywhere. And if you see at the end of the second line, you see the double bars, and then you see the flat signs. The flat signs are the indication of a new key signature. They're introducing flats into the key signature, which means you're going into the key of F major. The double bars means you're going into a new section. They're two different things. They're not linked together. You don't have to have double bars just because you change key signatures. But the double bars means you're leaving one section and going into another. I think I talked about that earlier. Technically speaking, at the end of the second line where the double bars are, that should be a thin and thick bar line there because if you see the fine above it, the piece is going to end there eventually. And so that should be a thin and thick. So let's cover the piece and see what happens. It's a full page long with a DC alfini. It's a little longer than that, okay, but we only have a page to learn. Treble and bass clef, it starts out with no sharps or flats in the key signature, so it starts out in C major. That's 4-4 four, four time signature. Now I see quarter notes, eighth notes, half notes, whole notes, okay. Take it one hand at a time, make sure we understand what each hand is doing. Starting with the right hand, thumb here, we're starting out here. That's one and two and three and. Three and two and. Hopefully, hopefully you can read these notes by now and you know the names of the notes and all that. Now at the end of the second line, you're here. They want you to move up here in the F position. Because we're going into F major. Well, you're not moving because you're going into F major. You're moving because you need those where the notes are. But we're going into F major here, so now all the Bs are going to be automatically B flat. However, if you look at the beginning of the third line, you'll see three Fs. We have repeated notes. Remember what I said about repeated notes. We can take advantage of those to change hand positions. So rather than playing the first one with thumb, I'm going to stay right where I am at the end of the second line, and I'm going to play the first one with fourth finger, and then thumb. I'm going to move there. I recommend that rather than trying to go here. That's really not a very good fingering. You have to do it sometimes, but if there's another way, I recommend it. So I'm going to do four and then one. So you're here in the third line. Don't forget the B flat, it's in the key signature now. So you get down to the bottom, the F. Now we need to go back to the top, which is thumb here again. Well, I would like to teach you another advanced fingering thing. I think I've talked about this once before. But I want to avoid this thumb to thumb if I can. So what I'm going to do in the last measure, I'm going to play it with the thumb. And then while I'm holding it down, I'm going to put my fourth finger on it. So now I'm holding it down with the fourth finger. I didn't play it again. I'm, but I just switched fingers. I substituted a finger for another finger. Do it immediately. This way I'm ready for the thumb going on. So we call that a finger substitution. Play it with one and then put fourth finger on it while you're holding it down. And when you write it in the music, if you do, you would do a one and then a dash and then a four. So you give the first finger that you play it with and then the other finger is what you the new finger you put on it. yeah, And you'll see that in music sometimes. You'll see a uh, finger number dash another finger number, and that's finger substitution. Right hand, we got the chord. So you have three note chord, rest, and then a half notes, and then we have an F and a G. Get used to this. At the end of the second line, you're here. Here you there's other ways we can finger this, but I'm not ready to present those to you yet. So here, go ahead and lift up. We don't have to worry about moving the hands at the same time. The way they want you to do it, you got to move both hands. Talk about a nightmare when you start having to move both hands at the same time. But if you do the fingering I suggested, you're moving the right hand or left hand first, and then the right hand. So you're not moving them at the same time. 
movement one hand and then the other, and that's, in my opinion, a much safer fingering. Now at the end, the bottom here, you're going to move the left hand back down, but again in the right hand, if you do the finger substitution, your right hand doesn't need to move there. So you're here. Right hand's already in position. You just focus on getting the left hand down. That's what I recommend. These fingerings I'm showing you are more advanced fingerings, but as I said, you will use them eventually. They will come in handy, so why not just learn them now? Now once you have the notes and rhythms figured out, get rid of the hesitations. You may have to look down at the piano when you're moving around, okay. Otherwise, keep your eyes on the music. Then we think about the articulation, which they don't give you any. Okay, I'll come back to that later. Dynamics, mezzo piano at the beginning. Mezzo, that's sort of soft, and that's for the melody, and that's the right hand here. The left hand needs to be in the background. Keep it soft. And when you get to the third line here, you go up to mezzo forte. Or medium loud, moderately loud, sort of loud, right hand. Left hand still in the background. So the last two lines there are a little louder than the first two lines, basically. And then once you have that, then we think about the interpretation. Remember the natural accents. One, two, three, four. Three, four, do that. As far as the phrasing goes, you can take this in two major phrases where it's a statement reply. Up. One. Statement. Reply. It's like every two measures, it's a, it's a lift up form. It's like taking a breath. That's all. Remember the DC alfine? DC means go back to the beginning, and fine, alfine means go to fine, which is at the end of the second line. So it's six lines long rather than four. That's all right. Think about a march. What left, right, left. How fast would they be marching? It's good speed to take it if you can. Accuracy is more important than speed, so make sure you're accurate. Don't go faster than that. Let's play it together very slowly and check all the notes and rhythms. I'm not going to do any dynamics and do it all about the same, but I will do the DC Alfini and I'm going to lift up between the phrases about every two measures. So I'll give us four counts. One, Two, ready, go.
three, four.